What is up my hunting brothers and sisters? Today is a part two of the new 4th Arrow 3.0 shoulder and base system. I'm gonna show you how, you how you can take an already awesome product and make it even better. So stay tuned. All right, the other day I did a review on the new 4th Arrow base system. It's their 3.0 version, so basically third generation uh, that they've come out with, with the shoulders, the bases, they've got the talon for the mobile hunter and all that. And I'm gonna show you here how I've found that we can make this product even better. Now, I know a big selling point to the new 3.0 is the talon base system but I'm not a mobile hunter. I'll keep it and there'll probably be a time or two that I use it, but I'm more interested in having a bunch of bases in a bunch of different trees. I have a dozen of the new bases. This is a new base right here behind me. So that's the new base. And in the other video, I showed you this mounted to the tree. Uh, if you wanna see that video, I'll put a link down in the description of this one. So basically how this works is this is mounted to the tree like this vertically, your shoulder, is going to come in and it's going to drop down through this rectangular hole that you can see right here. It's going to drop down through and then this top lip drops over, this hooks right over the top of the base. And so once that's on there, it's secure. And then on the bottom side right here, there is a thumb screw. But you would loosen this up and then there's this block that you're going to turn. This is super short. So you ultimately want this thing turned like 90 degrees and then you can tighten it down and it locks it and it's very secure. It's actually a very excellent concept, but the problem is with this one is they put this thumb screw on here where the others, they had a stud sticking out with a nut. And as you can see, this is locked down right there fairly tight. This is the thumb screw, the big thumb wheel on it. And there's one rotation, one and a half, at two and a two, maybe two and a quarter rotation, it falls out. I guarantee you that this is going to mess up a lot of hunts because this is gonna fall down on the ground and then all of a sudden this isn't gonna be secure. So I don't like this. So we're gonna fix this today. My idea centers around this knob, which is very similar, only a little larger than the knob that came with the 1.0 and 2.0s. Now what's missing is we don't have a stud sticking out of here. But if we use this knob, then we can tighten everything down. And this knob that I found online, and I'll show you where I found it in a minute, it actually passes right down through this. So this is a three quarter inch wide gap and this is just under three quarters of an inch. So I found these knobs on eBay. Uh, I had to buy a 10 pack, I really didn't have a choice. They were like 15 bucks for 10. Um, but they're made by this Hasty or Hoste Engineering. Uh, you can see their website, hoste.engineering.com. I have zero affiliation. Again, I bought these off of eBay. Uh, but they're an extra long, which I like. It would stick down. Uh, they're quarter 20 thread in the middle, which is what the tap is on the bottom of the shoulder. And they're nice and wide. And I think this will be a great way to upgrade this. All right, so how are we gonna go about this? Well, on the bottom of the new 3.0 base is a drilled and tap blind hole. A blind hole meaning that it bottoms out to nothing, okay? So there's nothing you're gonna get into as far as internal guts in this by going up into this hole. So it's a quarter 20, that's the thumb screw they gave me. So I started digging through some stuff that I have and I just found this machine screw that's two inch long, quarter 20, and just all my stuff that I have. I painted the end of the, or the head of this thing black. We're not gonna do a tutorial on that. I assume you can figure out how to paint the end of something black. I just didn't want it shiny. And it threads all the way in and it bottoms out in here. Now I could go with just this whole machine screw, but the problem is it's really, it's too long. And not by a lot. Uh, I need to cut quarter to three eighths of an inch off of it. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Okay, here I have it all bottomed out, the machine screw in here. And then this would be in the retracted position as if I was storing it. I don't want all this head up here, but I'm gonna have to have a little bit of space because when I clamp it into the base, which I'll show you in a second, 
it's only going to clamp down about that far because I got to clamp over the material thickness. So I'm going to cut most of this difference off. I'm going to leave a little bit of gap so I can loosen it up, slide this up, turn it, and be able to get the whole thing out. So, and then we'll thread it back in. Okay, so what you see here is this would be if I was in the tree, it's in a lock position. This would be the maximum distance I need for something to be tight. Now I need to, to get it out, I need to back it off, oh, about a turn or so. And now you can see I can swivel this piece around and tuck it up in there. So as long as I can get that much, that's all I need. And I don't need all of this sticking out. So I'm gonna trim the majority of that distance of the other end of this bolt off. And if I measure that, we're talking about 5 sixteenths of an inch. About 5 sixteenths of an inch is all I need to cut off of that. Okay, what I did was I actually screwed a nut on here at 5 sixteenths off the end. And basically I'm going to use the edge of that nut as a cutting guide. And then I can back the nut off. And when I do that, it helps clean up the threads. And then we can really polish up the threads as well. And you can use a hacksaw, a Dremel, or whatever. I happen to have this Metabo cut off, and that's what I'm going to do. And now you can just back that nut off of there, and it will clean the threads up as you go. And so now that is the perfect length. Now what I tell you to do is take a grinding wheel or uh, sandpaper or, or Dremel, and probably bevel 45 around this so you get a nice uh, clean finish on the end of it. All right, now we're ready to assemble this. Uh, I've already dry fit it, so I know that I got it the right length, but I'll show you what the finished product and assembly is going to look like. You're going to run the knob all the way up against the head of the bolt. You're going to put your blocker on, making sure you put the little strips towards the end of the, the stud. Then I'm going to use some blue Loctite. You can use red. Red is a little more permanent. I'm going to start with blue. If I have to change it out to red down the road, I will. I'm going to put just a few drops of blue on here. I'm going to take and just thread this in. And get a screwdriver, in my case. You could use a regular bolt if you wanted to, a quarter 20 bolt. This happens to what I had. I'm gonna tighten that down in there pretty tight. Now, it takes about 16 hours for the thread locker to actually set up, or overnight, basically. So that becomes our new situation. Now for our test fit. If we were hunting, this would be in our pocket, and this would be square and tight, just like this. You can see I got a little bit of a gap to work with here. When it's mounted on the tree, I slide that through, loosen this up, pull this, turn this, and tighten it right back down. And then all I've got is this little, uh, probably eighth of an inch or so of gap right there. And I can get that thing nice and tight with the thumb screw. When I'm done hunting, I can back this off. I can turn this. Tighten that right back down, pull the whole assembly out, and then it's not rattling. I'm not losing anything. There's nothing for me to lose. So there's our upgrade. It was actually really easy to do. Um, it's something that I think fourth arrow is a little bit dropping the ball on a guy like me who wants to run the multiple bases. I know why they did it with the thumb screw they did, so they can get rid of that thing easily, and you can adapt your, uh, your talon base to the whole thing. And it's more of a run and gun setup. It's an awesome setup for run and gun. It's an awesome setup when you got multiple bases. But for me, that thumb screw, I knew what first hunt in, I'm gonna drop it, it's gonna hit the ground, I'm gonna be mad, I'm gonna be done with the whole system, and I just know how my temperament goes. So um, this is easy. Uh, I really like it. Once this Loctite sets up in here, this won't back out. If it does come loose, I'll go to a red Loctite, which is more permanent. But the blue, I think, will be fine. So all it cost me was a machine screw, which I actually had in a drawer. So get yourself a two inch machine screw, quarter 20, two inch bolt, whatever. Machine screws are kind of nice. Uh, and then I got this packet of knobs. Now I bought 10 of these in a pack because that was all I could do for like 15 bucks. I'd like to keep one extra just to have. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. The first eight people that want to mod their setup like this, 
uh, if they leave me comments down below in this channel, uh, I will send it to you free. I'll throw it in an envelope. You're just going to have to PM me uh, your address or something. We'll work something out so it's not out there on YouTube. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll work out the first eight people. I'll just send you each one of you one of these, and you can do this mod, and it'll clean this thing up. It's actually a pretty cool system. I'm really looking forward to hunting with it this year. Check out my other video again on the full review of the system before I modded this. And somewhere during season, I'll give you an update of what my opinions on this whole thing are. As always, God bless and stay safe. Deer seasons are right around the corner. And as, in, as always, it's a new day in the outdoors.